Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, you got questions about the longevity products, our truth skin health products, ingredients, formulations. A common or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, call 866-735-2470, that's 866-735-2470, or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and you can purchase longevity products right off the website at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also click on the Join the Team link if you want to start a business, if you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneurially minded, if you like working for yourself, you don't want to have to answer to a boss, if you want to be your own boss, work out of your home, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business, writing off your mileage, writing off your rent, writing off your home office, writing off your stamps, your, your pens, your office equipment, in addition to working for yourself, which I love personally, I've been an entrepreneur and worked for myself since, since uh, I quit Albertson's pharmacy in 1993, way back in the day. I just got sick of working for a big corporation. And I just started my own business and I have been, it's, it, it was the best business move. It was the best move I ever made in my adult life was starting my own business and being in business for myself. If you are an entrepreneur, it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody uh, likes the ups and the downs and the scariness of it. It is, it can be a little bit scary working for yourself, you know, making your own money, but the rewards are tremendous. And if you like that kind of lifestyle, you definitely want to check out the longevity business opportunity, please call 866-735-2470 or click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and help change the world while you're making money and working for yourself. And when I say change the world, I'm not exaggerating, changing it, the world at the most fundamental level there is, which is the level of our individual health. Call 866-735-2470 for more info or click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. We left off on our last episode talking about fats, the distinctions in the world of fats. We've been talking about fats now for a couple of weeks, three weeks or so. Fats are, fats are fascinating. They're the most fascinating, to me anyway, they're the most fascinating of all the food groups, misunderstood as they are. We said there's three types of lipids. Lipids and fats sometimes get used synonymously. They're not. There are three types of lipids. Cholesterol is a lipid. Phospholipids are lipids. And then what we call fats, which are technically or more accurately referred to as triglycerides. You've all heard the term triglycerides if you've ever had blood work done because triglycerides are float around in the blood and they're measured. And their relevance, uh, their association with heart disease is indisputable. They're elevated triglycerides are associated not just with heart disease, they're also associated with diabetes and blood sugar problems. These triglycerides come in three sizes, short triglycerides, medium triglycerides, medium chain triglycerides, you've heard that term, and then long triglycerides. And each one of these has their own health value and their own health benefits, their own health relevance. We're going to talk about the short ones here in a little bit, 
because they're super, super cool. And then we've talked about the medium ones. Last program, last couple programs, we've been talking about the long ones. These long fatty acids, the long chain fatty acids are the most common ones. Those are, the, those are typically the ones that everybody thinks about or talks about when we talk about fats in the blood or restricting your fats or being careful with the dietary fats. We're mostly talking about long triglycerides or long, long fatty acids, I should say. And uh, these long ones come in unsaturated form, which are solid or semi-solid, or they come in uh, unsaturated. They come saturated, I should say, solid or semi-solid, and they come unsaturated, which are the liquid. The body makes its own fatty acids, so there's no real deficiency that it can occur in fatty acids with, with a major exception, two major exceptions. And these are two fatty acids, long, unsaturated fatty acids that are unspeakably important and uh, whose deficiencies play a potential role in every single chronic degenerative disease you can name, particularly the two biggies, cancer and heart disease, and these two critical, essential fatty acids, yes, EFAs, unsaturated fatty acids, they're like vitamins. They're essential. You have to eat them. You got to get them. You gotta, your body can't make them, and they're like vitamins, and they play roles everywhere in the body because they are an integral part of the cell membrane. They also play a major role in inflammation and anti-inflammation, called EFAs. We, say it, we talk about them all the time. Technically, your EFAs are ALA and LA. Colloquially, we just generalize them as omega-6 and omega-3. Actually, LA is linoleic acid. We call that omega-6. And then alpha-linolenic acid, we call that omega-3. Some you'll hear them called omega-6 and omega-3 somewhat inaccurately in the sense that omega, there's lots of different omega-6s and omega-3s that aren't necessarily essential. That's, this leads to some confusion, uh, especially when it comes to fish oil and omega-3s. See, not all omega-3s are essential. Yes, it's true that there's one omega-3 that's essential, but just because something has, says, uh, purports to have omega-3s in it doesn't mean that it's essential. And that's one of the con confusing points about fish oil. Fish oil contains omega-3s that are not essential. Not to say they're not good. Not to say they're not important. They are very good. They're very important. You've heard the term, maybe, DHA and EPA. I'm not even going to get into what those stand for. DHA and EPA are chemically omega-3s, but they're not essential. Does that mean that you don't need them? I didn't say that. They definitely need them. Because not everybody gets enough of them, and these things are super important, especially for the brain and the eyes. Which is why, in my opinion, if unless you're a vegan, I suppose, you can't get them. Although you can get them in algae and seaweed, these uh, omega-3s. In any case, uh, omega-3s from uh, non-essential as they may be from fish oil are really important. And in my opinion, if you're supplementing with EFAs, you want to make sure there's some fish oil in there, but don't be confused. Uh, don't be misled by thinking that uh, they're essential because they're not. Flax seeds and chia seeds and seeds in general contain the essential omega-3s. And uh, that's ALA, the, essential, the one essential omega-3, and that's ALA. And uh, there's a guy named Brian Peskin, P-E-S-C-I-N, Brian Peskin. He writes about this a lot. He calls them parent essential oils. P -E, he calls them PEOs. He kind of made that term up, but, but it still makes sense. The parent essential oil is ALA. That's the one that you get in seeds. The derivative uh, omega-3 is not essential, and that's the one you get in fish. And he, he goes out on, he, he kind of exaggerates a little bit. I'm not sure I agree with everything he says. He, he says fish oil is actually bad for you. I don't agree with that. Um, but uh, his point is well taken that the omega-3s in fish are not essential, as important as they are. And oh, by the way, omega-9s are not essential either. And there's some misunderstanding about that. Omega-9s are not essential fatty acids. The word essential, remember, means you have to have it. You've got to get it in your food. You've got to get it in your diet. You've got to get it in supplement, in supplement form, or you're just not going to have it. Omega-9 doesn't fit into that bill, nor does the fish oil, the uh, omega-3s in fish oil. The only two essential fatty acids are alpha-linolenic acid, which is also known as omega-3, or is colloquially known as omega-3, and linoleic acid, which is colloquially known as omega-6. Now, all of these scientific distinctions in the world of fat, you can go crazy with all of these different distinctions, but there's one distinction that is really, really super practical. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our, num our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll be back right after this. We 
are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. Got a search engine as well as seven plus, seven and a half years of archives with all kinds of health information. There's some really interesting programs that we've done. We've talked about all kinds of stuff. Um, talked about cancer and heart disease and various skin issues. And this is a show where we, we dive deep in this show. We go, this is not, you're not going to get the standard internet memes on this program. If you've been listening to this program for seven and a half years, or even for, for any amount of time, you're going to know more than most people. And the more you listen, the more you're going to know. And if you've listened long enough, you're going to know more than your doctor. You're going to know more than so-called healthcare professionals because they represent the mainstream. We don't talk about the mainstream here. We talk about chemistry. We talk about the relevance of chemistry when it, uh, to our health. And we treat you like you're intelligent. We, if you're listening to this program, you're an intelligent person. We have a, a, perhaps the biggest problem that we confront when it comes to health is not the wrong fats. It's not nutritional deficiency. It's not lack of uh, exercise. Perhaps the biggest problem we confront when it comes to health is scientific illiteracy. We are scientifically illiterate, present company excluded, if you're listening to this program. Generally, as a culture, we do not think scientifically and we do not think critically. Lack of critical thinking and lack of scientific thinking is the number one, the way I look at it, it's the number one health challenge that we confront. And this program is about waking people up. It's about diving deep so that we can become critical thinkers, so that we can become scientific thinkers, so we don't buy into the mainstream memes. And if you're on a statin drug, or you're taking a diabetes drug, or you think, my, uh, my mother had heart disease, so I'm going to have heart disease because it runs in my family. These are all silly internet memes. If you're thinking that no, there's nothing you could do to uh, reverse a genetic disease, if there's nothing you could do to feel better because it's in your genes. I got a, a, a Facebook post a couple days ago from a lady who's an esthetician, a skincare professional who should know better. And she said, well, my doctor said that you don't, doesn't matter what you eat and it doesn't matter what supplements you take. It's not going to have any effect on the aging of your skin. And I was, I have to admit, I had to, I had to, force myself not to fire back a note because I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to be rude but this is the kind of silliness that is perpetuated in the mainstream the idea that nutritional supplementation isn't going to make a difference the idea that your chocolate isn't going to uh, chocolate isn't going to affect your skin the idea that it doesn't matter what you eat the idea that uh, you need to have a prescription strategy for your chronic degenerative disease or to reduce the risks of some kind of horrible event happening these are mainstream meme ideas that were Pounded with, pounded with, pounded with, pounded with every hour, every minute through billboards and through advertising and through uh, so-called educational Dr. Oz type programs everywhere. The American Heart Association still says to this day, they still talk about using margarine instead of butter when just a little bit of understanding about biochemistry, just a tiny little bit will show you that when you ingest distorted franken fats, those distorted franken fats are going to disrupt biochemistry. Just a little bit of understanding. And this is the American Heart Association. Is it any wonder that heart disease has gone through the roof? The statistics for heart disease are ridiculous. 600,000, 700,000 people dying every year. 1.3 million, 1.4 million diagnosis every year. I don't even know the ridiculous numbers. And the numbers have only gotten worse since we've had an American Heart Association. Diabetes numbers have gotten crazy, epidemic-like since we've had an American Diabetes Association. You want to you wanna turn a health challenge into an epidemic? Start an organization. Start a foundation. All right. We're talking about the different kinds of fats, and it is kind of interesting, but the major, the major distinction that you want to understand when it comes to fats, the major distinction, the most important distinction is not a high-tech in technical distinction, but a practical common sense distinction. It's the distinction between unprocessed fats and processed fats, or m more accurately, minimally processed and highly processed because anything's gonna, processing means anything. You're, you're never very rarely going to get a fat that hasn't somehow been processed or changed, I should say. So they minimally processed and highly processed. The prototype processed fat is called a trans fat. 
You've heard that term, trans fats. The danger of trans fats have been talked about for decades. I first heard about trans fats in the 1980s and the health issues that are associated with the trans fats. Although it has been maybe the last 10 years or so uh, that really the seriousness of these, the, the seriousness and the health impact of these, these distorted Franken fats, I call them, has been considered to be a, a, a real player when it comes to heart disease, especially heart disease and cancer, but all chronic diseases, chronic degenerative diseases. Just yesterday, an article came out. This is from CNN. Uh, ba -ba -bom. On Monday, the World Health Organization launched an initiative called Replace that's going to provide guidance for all countries on how to remove artificial trans fats from their foods. And by the way, there are natural trans fats found in foods. So artificial trans fats are the ones we're talking about. Artificial trans fats uh, possibly leading to a worldwide eradication. They're trying to, uh, this initiative is meant to lead countries in establishing legislation to eliminate trans fats. Replace, by the way, stands for review dietary sources, promote use of healthier fats, legislate, assess changes, create awareness, and enforce. So what is called replace? Basically, they want to regulate the kind of fats. I don't, I'm, you know, trans fats are awful, but you don't need regulation. You don't need rules. You don't need laws. I'm not a big believer in legislation and laws. Just don't eat trans fats. You don't need to have a law that says there's no trans fats. It's just, that's just more reason why you need to have government and institutions. It's to, have more, it's to, it's to enforce more laws. So I don't, I'm not a big believer in laws, world, world Health Organization laws or any other laws. But the point is, is that it's being recognized that this thing is a problem. It replaces being touted as a, quote, step-by-step -step guide for the elimination of industrially produced trans fatty acids from the global food supply, unquote. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I'm not a big believer in laws, but I see where they're going here. The problem with trans fats involves how the body uses fats. See, the body will take fats, you eat fats, they go into the blood, and then these fats are either stored or they're used. Now, if they're stored, that's one thing. But when they're used, they're used, one of the major places where they're used is in cell membranes. See, trans fats are basically regular fats, except they have a little tweak. They got a little bend. They're exactly the same as a normal, a trans fatty acid is exactly the same as a normal fatty acid, except it has a little bend, a little tweak. So it's, it's perfectly normal except for this little tweak. And so the body doesn't see it as being toxic or seeing, seeing it as a problem. It just uses it like a regular fat, especially when the good fats aren't, or the normal fats aren't present. So when we eat a normal fat, that normal fat is going to get either stored or it's going to get used. And one of the places it gets used is in cell membranes. So you eat a fat and some, it either gets stored or used. One of the places it gets used is a cell membrane. That's a normal fat and that's all well and good. However, if you eat a trans fat, which looks almost exactly like an ordinary fat, that trans fat is going to get incorporated into the cell membrane. And now that little bend or that little kink is going to disrupt the structure of the cell membrane. And because structure equals function, now you have a dysfunctional cell membrane. And that is a big problem. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. We'll continue talking about fats and trans fats and uh, this whole idea. Of the, well, you know what? There's actually a, a worse fat than a trans fat. Trans fats get a lot of the bad press and now companies, sneaky food pr uh, processing companies will tell you they have no trans fats in their products, but they got this other kind of fat. That's it may be worse than trans fats. It's a processed fat and hardens things like a tr it's produced when in, during the hardening process. In fact, it's one of the ways that manufacturers will harden fats. They'll interesterify the fat, and this is a whole another problem that we have. So if you see these new products out there, uh, fake margarine or fake. I, isn't that funny? Fake margarine. So now you got, you got margarine, which is fake butter. Now you got fake margarine, which they call spreads. And these spreads will say no trans fats. But what they don't tell you is there's this worse kind of fat that's in there. Or maybe worse kind of fat. Certainly as bad. Point being, any processed fat is going to be an issue. 
fats are delicate. Fats are highly, highly unstable. Fats uh, have to be used in just the right form. Remember, it's all about, chemistry is all about tinker toys. Chemistry is tinker toys. Structure equals function. The tinker toy shape of a, of a, a molecule, of, of a substance, is extremely important when it comes to its function. If the tinker toy is tweaked, which is what processing does, the function will be disturbed. Anytime you process a food, you are going to run into a problem. Even heat, just plain old cooking, is going to run into a problem. This is why people who think they're eating paleo, or you hear, you hear nutritionists talk about eating the caveman diet or the ancestral diet. There's no ancestral diet. Unless you're eating the, eating the, jumping on the antelope and eating them raw or maybe just roasting it quick, roasting the meat quickly. I suppose if you hunt, wild hunting, hunt wild game, that's about as close to eating paleo as you're going to get. All food is going to have some degree of processing. You can't get around it. What you want to do is you want to go for minimally processing, especially when it comes to fats. If it's a, if it's a, if it's a fat that comes in a little tub, which doesn't exist in nature, that's a fat you probably don't want to use. Even if it's zero trans fats. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. From, I don't even see where I got this one from. It's kind of interesting though. This is from uh, bustle.com. Bustle.com is kind of an interesting uh, website if you like unusual and uh, off the beaten path kind of stories. Is sweating good for your skin? Embrace the heat wave because there are lots of benefits. Yeah, it turns out sweating is pretty darn good for your skin. Sweating protects your skin from bacteria. It's got microbial, antimicrobial, antimicrobial properties. It pulls out, uh, pulls minerals through, and which pulls out water. So it has a cooling effect and a hydrating effect on the skin. The mineral loss, you probably heard that you'll lose minerals through sweat. Well, that mineral loss, as the minerals are rising upwards, it's pulling up water. Minerals always attract water. That's a fundamental chemical reaction, biochemical reactions. Minerals attract water. And so as the minerals, the potassium and the calcium and the magnesium are coming out in the sweat, they're pulling out moisture, and this can help hydrate the skin. Although you do have to make sure if you're sweating a lot, that of course, that you want to be using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine and replacing, your, replacing those electrolytes, those minerals. Uh, sweating is perhaps the most important benefit to sweating is it's awesome for detox. L. Ron Hubbard wrote a book about uh, using saunas, dry saunas for detox. And I'm uh, not, a, whatever you think about L. Ron Hubbard in Scientology, his point is well taken that uh, using saunas to uh, improve sweating or increase sweating is a great way to detox. Sweating can also help uh, heal wounds. Sweating has uh, anti uh, sun protection properties, ultra anti ultra anti UV properties, like a natural sunscreen. Sweating, or I should say, sebum, which is a skin oil, not sweat, not the same as sweat, can be a problem if you have acne, because sebum is a uh, is an pro inflammatory substance, especially when it oxidizes. I don't know why I brought that up. I just thought of secretions coming out of the skin. Sweat and sebum are not the same thing, of course, but sebum can be a problem. If you're producing lots of skin oils, uh, the skin oil, particularly one skin oil, which we talked about a moment ago called oleic acid, which is also known as omega-9, actually can be somewhat irritating to the skin, can be irritating to the eyes. All right, 844-236-6010. I'm going to do one more and then we'll get your phone calls here. Uh, this one is from, uh, this one's from Shutterstock.com. The life-saving power of gratitude or why you should write that thank you note. Gratitude may be more beneficial than we commonly suppose. One recent study asked subjects to write a note of thanks to someone and then estimate how surprised and happy the recipient would feel. Researchers found that writing as few as three weekly thank you notes over the course of three weeks improved life satisfaction, increased happy feelings, and reduced symptoms of depression. Depression and anxiety are another one of those health challenges that are on the epidemic scale, I was reading a statistic here a couple days ago about how suicides are now like, I think they're either the, the third or fourth leading cause of death. They've moved up past murders, past homicides. Suicides have moved past, up past homicides as a leading cause of death. Teenage suicides, children's suicides. 
we people are feeling very troubled and understandably so and using mental strategies and emotional strategies should never ever ever be underestimated as a health tool mental and emotional strategies i love the chemistry i love the biochemistry i'm all about nutrition all about how the body uh, stays healthy or gets sick on a biochemical level love that stuff but do not underestimate the importance of the spiritual, mental, and emotional dimensions when it comes to health. If you're not getting better, if you're doing all the right things and you're not getting better, there's probably something percolating at those levels. I was just watching a YouTube of a guy. Uh, 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 this is amazing. He's, the guy's 109 years old, and it's, they, it's a National Geographic thing, and it's on YouTube. You can get it. And it is amazing to see this guy at 109 years old, okay? He's just a African-American guy born in like 19, whatever. I don't even know. What does 109 mean? He was born in uh, 1909, I guess. And uh, he was in World War II. He's the oldest living veteran. Google it. It's amazing. He's 109. Guess what? He smokes cigars. And he loves ice cream. He eats ice cream every night. Google it. Watch or YouTube it. It's very instructive. And when I was watching, I was like, he's doing everything wrong. But he's 109. I guarantee you, and you can tell by listening to him, that he's operating at, effectively at these other dimensions. So if you're, getting, if you're not as healthy as you want to be, and you're doing all, things, all the right things nutritionally, or even if, you're, even if you're only doing half the right things nutritionally, practice gratitude. You know, gratitude and grace come from the same root. They're all about the idea that you're okay. There's two basic forces. There's the force of I'm not okay. There's the force of I'm okay. Albert Einstein said if he could talk to God, he would ask him one thing. Is the universe friendly? That's basically the same idea. From a neurological perspective, we call that the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. So it's not just all psychology. It actually interacts neuro neurologically. Psychology and, neuro psychology and neurology are connected via hormones. That's the job of the hormones. So I didn't mean to digress there, but just understand that there's a very powerful dimension that we have a lot of control over. That's the spiritual, mental, and emotional dimensions of our lives. And I, we underestimate those at our health peril. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back with your calls right after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. I want to remind you to check out our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and also the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can order all your longevity products off the website or call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you're in the Denver area, I'm going to be doing a talk at my lab which I've been, uh, I've been, um, been wanting to do for a long time. I haven't really gotten a chance to do a longevity. Well, it won't really be exactly a longevity talk, but we'll, we'll answer some longevity questions if you want. It'll be on skin and nutrition. It'll be at my facility at, uh, in Denver this Saturday, 11 a.m., 2240 Curtis Street in Denver, Colorado, zip 80205. And, uh, Send an email, ben at ksco.com, and let me know you're coming. Uh, if you're in the Denver area, I'd love to see you. And that'll be 11 o'clock this Saturday, August the 4th at 2240 Curtis Street in Denver, Colorado, 80205. All right. 844 236 Let's go to the phones and say hello to Dave in the thumb. Good morning, Dave. What's up, buddy? Hey, Ben. <laughs> You know, speaking of gratitude, Pam and I just adore you. We love your show and the education that you're giving to people across the nation. It's just incredible. Thank you so Thank much. You I appreciate that. that you are Thank awesome, you. sir. Thank you, Dave. What's going on? How can I help you? Well, um, I have a, a friend that is a diabetic. He's an older gentleman. And he was told that he should be taking this fermented cod liver oil. Huh. Okay. And for his diabetes. And I'm okay. just very curious how Have you heard of it? Fermented cod liver oil from oxidizing. Well, that's the whole idea is the fermented cod liver oil 
uh, the fermentation process is a much gentler way to uh, make the nutrients available. So when you eat, when you or do ordinary uh, uh, fish oil, your body has to go through a lot of, it has to do a lot of work in order to liberate the vitamin A and the vitamin D and the essential fatty acids or the uh, omega fatty acids, etc. Ferment the fermentation process makes it easier for the body to obtain them. So I don't necessarily know about the oxidation. I don't. It, it's a it's an easy way of uh, uh, of making the the cod liver oil more nu nutritionally valuable. That's that's the whole no, that's the whole idea behind the fermentation process. Wow. So, so I don't know about oxidizing. Think I think that's what you're talking about. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Oxidation is a function of oxygen, uh, and if anything, the, these bacteria will be using up oxygen. They basically be antioxidants. So I would imagine. So I don't think that's that's an issue. Um, the the real issue, the, uh, the real point of fermented cod liver oil is the idea that you liberate those oil, the, or you liberate those nutrients out of the oil. You know, the oil itself contains the nutrients. And the oil itself is not the nutrient. It contains nutrients, and those nutrients have to be released. The vitamin D, the vitamin A, the omega fatty acids, the omega-3 fatty acids, uh, those have to be released. And the fermentation process is kind of a gentle way of pre-release. Pre Let's put it, put it another way. They pre-release it so that when it gets into the system, your digestive system doesn't have to work as hard, doesn't have to do as much work, uh, and uh, they're, they're, the nutrients are still going to be available. Does that make sense? I hope I explained that well. Okay, it does. Good. I appreciate that. And uh, do right. so you think it would be a good thing to take? Yeah. It? Yeah, okay. absolutely. We'll have to try it. Thank you yeah, so much. You have a great day. All right. Take care, Dave. Thank you so much. All right. 844-236-6010. Let's go to Ottawa. I'd say good morning to Cliff. What's up, Cliff? Yeah. Hey, how are you today, Ben? Doing good. You always have something good to say. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what you got for us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, like, I'm glad you brought up gratitude because uh, it's funny because I am, you know, this has been a problem for me. I get grateful, then I get ungrateful. I kind of, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I read, it's funny, I ran into this woman uh, earlier this, I mean, last week, and I was, like, I work in a hospital in security, and I, I went into the dementia unit, and, like, uh, this woman starts talking to me. She has dementia. And then she, I start asking, well, how do you like the food? And and then and then she tells me how she loves it, how the place is so clean. And then and then I, I was kind of surprised because normally everybody complains about everything, uh -huh. right? Yeah. This woman, like, I couldn't believe, That's like, she has an excellent spirit. This woman, and so I started asking her, well, what did you do for a living? You know, because I, I started uh, and I realized she was some high level person. Uh -huh. and, you know. And, you know, whatever in the government, you know, and she, but she had dementia. With, Chris, uh, yeah, uh, Cliff, she, pardon me. But she was diagnosed with dementia. Well, yeah, she was in a dementia lock unit. Uh, like, well, she's a dementia patient, but uh -huh. that's interesting. But she still had uh, had this element of gratitude going on. Oh, but yeah, but her spirit is excellent. You know, she's that's got wild. this really excellent spirit. But and and really, I learned a lot from her, like just talking to her. That I love it. That's I, a great I, story. I, yeah, it is. Great... it's amazing. I, I went downstairs and I, I, I started telling people I worked with about it. And, and this is my big lesson, you know, uh, like for the week. And, and it's amazing, you know, like you hear this person talk, but, you know, I don't know. To me, it meant something. But, but like what I was thinking. Do you ever see the movie thing... King of Hearts, Cliff? You ever hear this movie no, King of Hearts? Have you heard of this movie no. King of Hearts? No, sir. Tell me about it. Yeah. I'll tell you real quick because we have run out of time. It's really interesting. So King of Hearts yeah. takes place in World War II in France, in a little town in France. And the yeah. Nazis put a bomb in the clock tower in this little town in France. And so all, everybody leaves the town, except they forget to tell the people the insane asylum. So the folks at the insane asylum, uh, the doctors all leave, and everybody leaves from the insane asylum because there's a bomb in the middle of the town. But they tell, forget to tell the patients. So the patients end up being by themselves. And they leak out into the town, and they start to take over the roles in the town. And so the insane, people, insane guy becomes the mayor, and the insane guy becomes the baker and the butcher. And the, you know, they take over the city, the town. And the whole town is then run by crazy people, essentially. But the message, the end message is, is who's the real crazy people here? The people who we say are crazy or the people who put bombs in the middle of clock towers and, uh, and fight wars and do all the crazy things that we do as a culture? And that's the, that's the message. So sometimes being crazy is not necessarily being, being all that crazy. You know, you can learn a lot from crazy people sometimes. So I, anyway, your story reminded me of that movie. 
That, that's a good one, yeah. King, King of Hearts. Yeah. yeah, but one thing, too, like, it's funny because I was listening before I went to bed last night. It was funny. I, I just have to go on YouTube. I keyed in Ben Fuchs, and I came up uh, with this, your, like, you did a series, three videos with this dandy lady named Brianna, and you're okay. talking about the like, skin, and you're talking about the cell, and, yeah. you know, I was thinking, you know, it was really excellent. You know, she really liked liked this, you know. She was yeah. a good person to do the video with because you she didn't know any so of this. She, yeah. she hadn't heard any of this stuff. You're like, you're, you're, you obviously know your stuff, and the listeners to this program know, you know, they hear it all the time, but there's a bunch of the world that doesn't ever hear that. So she was like that. She, she knew me from the skincare business, skincare side of things. She had no idea about the nutrition side. But she was the perfect person that yeah. talked to. Like, perfect. Believe me, it worked uh, really well. But what I was thinking, you know, like, if you could write a lot of this stuff down, like, let's put it that, let, let's say, for example, you know, let's say you go to, like, high school, right? And then, you know, you're in class. They have everything in a book, in an organized manner. I know. I know. Uh, I know. With, I totally understand. I hear I, all my friends are writing books, and I don't know why, but, you know, I have the blog, and I, I do write. I write a lot, actually. But just getting it into a book, I haven't figured out how to nail that down yet. And But it's, yeah, well, I told, it has to be done, I suppose. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> With diagrams, especially for the cell and everything like that, because, you know, you just gradually guide people. Because for me, it's kind of hard, like, in a sense that, let's say I'm taking courses right now, and somebody will talk, talk, talk. You pick up a lot of it, but if it's in book form, Agreed. Uh, like, just gradually, you just gradually work the person in there. So you concentrate. Yeah. A lot of people don't like books, but... Uh, well, you know you what? Know. There's visual... Cl Cliff, you probably understand this. You probably appreciate this. There's visual learners, and then there's oral learners, right? There's people who need to see yeah. it, and there's people who need to hear it. I yeah. personally am a visual learner. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm an oral learner, I think. I do both, but I think more yeah. pr predominantly oral. Some people need to hear it. Some people need to see it. Uh, and I, I, your point is well taken. I've had, I, I've had many attempts at writing books, and I've had many suggestions, and I, I, I have a lot. I mean, there's a lot there, obviously, but I just haven't figured out how to put it into a book form. And I have great admiration for, for writers and especially for prolific writers who act like Wallach. I've talked to Dr. Wallach about this. He's, you know, Dr. Wallach, you know how he writes his books? He sits on the plane and types. <laughs> That's it. And he's got like 50 books, you know, some ridiculous amount of books. And if you want to read a good book, by the way, a good health book, read Epigenetics. That's his best book. Yeah. And so wow. some people can do it. And I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate uh, and Thanks for listening to the, those Brianna videos. I appreciate that, too. All right, Cliff, and I appreciate you. You're one of my really smart listeners, so thank you so much, and thank you for calling. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, buddy. I've, that's gratitude. I have gratitude for that. Appreciation means to increase the value of something. When you appreciate something, you increase its value. Gratitude and appreciation are the same. They activate the parasympathetic nervous system. So appreciate and have gratitude for all the great things in your life because everybody's got something, something great in their life. All right, that's it for now. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.